That's another reason to go to the spiritual world. There's unlimited space. <laughs> The yoga system, Hare Krishna, is meant for thinking of Krishna, silent meditation and so on. But in this age, that's very difficult to sit in yoga posture and meditate for so many hours and keep the mind free from disturbance and then fix it within so that you're able to see Krishna in the heart. It's very difficult. Your cell phone will ring. Right it's all over. But to chant Hare Krishna is very easy. And chanting means naturally you're thinking of Krishna. There's no difference between chanting Hare Krishna and thinking of Krishna. Because chanting is Krishna's presence. And when we chant attentively, when we fix our mind on the transcendental vibration, then Krishna, that's where our mind is. The mind is now in Krishna. We don't have to think something special or do some sort of jitsu, jujitsu on your mind. Just fix the mind on the transcendental self. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. 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 Just chant Hare Krishna, fix the mind on this transcendental sound. And you'll go back to Krishna. In this life, you'll be in Krishna consciousness. In the next life, you can associate with Krishna. Okay, I'll stop here and see what kind of questions. Hmm. There was a general question about the actual marks that the um, Vaishnavas have. They have the 12 marks. Mm -hmm. um, the idea of actually being afraid of death and actually having 12 marks, would there be any um, reason why the superintendents, you wouldn't want to get caught by the superintendents? No. The other question is about these Tilak marks. <coughs> They're not simply to, because uh, we're afraid of death. They're to remind us of Krishna. That's what we're really afraid of, is forgetting Krishna. <laughs> Dying is, you know, that's unavoidable and no point worrying about that. But forgetting Krishna, that's that would be bad. Therefore, King Kulishekar has a nice prayer. He says that uh, may my uh, it is better to die now while my mind is absorbed in thinking of Krishna, because at the time of death, when it comes naturally, everything gets deranged and very difficult, and I don't know if I'll be able to think of Krishna, so better to die now. So that's our only concern, that we don't want to forget Krishna. Death, that's going to come. But forgetfulness of Krishna, that shouldn't come. Well, this Tilak is to remind us of Krishna. Yes. So, you were speaking about always remembering Krishna. Mm. So and never forgetting Krishna. And never forgetting Krishna. What's so great about Krishna that we should remember him? What's not great about Krishna? Mm. Everything about Krishna is great. His beauty is great. His knowledge is great. His fame is great. His strength is great. His detachment is great. Mm. Wealth, beauty, fame, strength, knowledge. They're all great. Greater than the person who's greater than anyone. Just like these football players, they're great because they have some strength and skill. And what is the manifestation of their strength and skill? They can kick a ball around. Now, isn't that great? But they're paid. Somebody was telling me how much they, these guys are. Four minutes a year. Four million pounds a year. And they're glorified, you know, such and such great football player and in the paper and people are paying money for him and everybody wants 
their name on his name on their product. And what is their greatness? Excuse me. Team spirit. So that they have team spirit to cooperate and work very well with other people in kicking a ball around. Now that's really great. <laughs> Excuse me? Without working together, you can't achieve progress. Yeah, they, they work together. And what is their great achievement? They kick a ball over a goal line. Victory. Victory. And what is victory? Victory is that you scored the ball, that you kicked the ball in the right place more than the other guy. Now that is really tremendous. <laughs> what an achievement. <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah, they became they competed and they became became champion ball kickers, and therefore they're the greatest guys on earth because they work together. But who gave them the strength to do it? Who gave them the skill to do it? No, not the coaches. The coach can't take a you know skinny weakling. Um, uncoordinated guy and make him a champion. Motivation, yeah, but there's a lot of people who are motivated and they they never progress outside of uh, the parking lot. Where do they get the strength and the, the skill? Practice. Practice, yeah, but there's people who practice and practice and practice and again, never make it. Krishna. They get it from Krishna. <laughs> when Krishna gives them, because Krishna has given them some capability, they become great champions. <coughs> champion football players, or champion warriors, or champion scholars, or champion politicians. They all become champions by a little bit of Krishna's grace, or Krishna's energy borrowed from Krishna. So if all these little guys were kicking balls around or stuffing um, ballot boxes and winning the election or whatever it is that they're doing to become champions, if they're doing it with the help of a little bit of Krishna's energy and they become great, how great is Krishna? Upon whom all the champions depend. And why should we be glorifying these little punks? <laughs> and neglecting Krishna. Because, because they prove that everything is possible. They prove that everything's possible? No, Krishna proves that everything's possible. They don't prove anything. They can't do the impossible anyway. But the thing is that Krishna is above uh, humans, all humans. And exactly. And players are humans, so if they achieve something that is quite impossible, or seems quite impossible. Yeah, that's great. Like, like a, you know, it's, it's inspiring. You know, like a dog walking on its hind legs. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't do it very well. It can't do it very long. But we say, wow, look at that. The dog is walking on its hind legs. <laughs> Humans are all species, so we can be inspired by the examples done by other people. Yeah, you can be inspired by these other people. I could also kick a ball around, or I, I could also get a promotion in my job. Therefore, everybody's watching it, and they're imagining something. They can't do it, so they watch and they get some pleasure someone else is doing, or they imagine, you know, that they sort of invest their energy in this person. He becomes their proxy. So if he wins, then I won. I'm not doing anything. I'm sitting in the pub drinking beer and, and watching the screen. But because I've somehow identified myself with this guy who's running around and kicking the ball, when he wins, then I think, wow, you know, we won. What did we want? 